I was on KJR last night in Seattle, and I was asked about all this huge money that's being paid to the receivers and why is the receiver market going haywire because they're bracing for either a trade of DK Metcalf or a similar contract. And one thing that I pointed out that I think we need to understand here is the salary cap is on the front end of an explosion. The pandemic screwed everything up. It knocked in more ways than one. But from right. the NFL salary cap standpoint, there was a $25 million per team difference in what the cap was versus what it would have been. They're working their way through those losses, but the cap is back up to 208, and it's going to keep going up and up and up in presumably sizable amounts because of the TV money and the gambling revenue that continues to explode. So these deals that are being done now – they look ridiculous. And and remember, we, we talked about this yesterday. Yeah. The agents like them to look even more ridiculous right. than they do. But when we get two, three, four years out, the cap keeps going up and up and up. And this is a problem with having so much transparency for what the players make. We never hear anything about what the owners make. Yeah. All we do is see their, their 300-foot yachts. We never hear... The dollars. The only team we have any access to the financial information is the Green Bay Packers, and they don't have an owner that's taken all that profit and pouring it into his or her pocket. So the transparency with the players means we resent the players. Oh, they're making too much money. They don't deserve it. No, they, they do they they do deserve it. The teams wouldn't be giving it to them if they didn't deserve it. The teams wouldn't be giving it to them if they couldn't afford it. And the reason the numbers are so nutty now is because 208 is going to become 230, is going to yeah. become 250, is going right. to become 300 yes. million per team per year. First year of the salary cap, it was like 40 million per team. It's going to be 300 before the end of the decade, I guarantee you. Uh, the definitely. question is, how quickly does it get to 300? Yeah, no, I, I mean, it, it's, that seems to be a league wide sentiment that you're saying here and sharing with everybody. Yeah, everybody kind of has that feel that. Yes, the, the, it's about to explode, you know, with the, you said it right. And l look at how popular it was back, you know, on TV again this year in the NFL. It killed it. I mean, it killed it. Ratings galore everywhere. Didn't matter what time frame, whatever, it killed it. So you know, from that standpoint, and you said the gambling and all that, yes, uh, the money is, is I, I would expect – some huge jumps here in the next few years. You're, you're right. Like, I would think we get to 300 million maybe before the decade's over. Uh, it, it, at least the way it seems like it's setting up. But yeah, it's not. It's not as big as money as everybody thinks, and the contracts aren't what everybody thinks. And you're right. It would be great to hear like, oh yeah, they're paying the best player and the best receiver in football 27 million dollars a year. But oh, don't forget the owner pocketed 495 million last year and took that home with him. I mean, come on. I mean, that's that, that's the kind of prices we're talking about here. 300, 400 million when the owners are, you know, taken taken for themselves and, and and rightly so. I get that, but you're right. It would help public sentiment if people knew those numbers a little bit. From 2013 to 2020, the cap went from 123 million per team to 198 million per team. 75 million per team in a seven year span. 21 is when it took a drop due to the pandemic, but now it's back north of where it was in 2020. It's at 208. And I just think we're going to keep seeing this acceleration. And yeah, it's going to hit 300 well before the end of the decade. Well before. Yeah. I Thanks to so. gambling. Thanks to the TV deals. And the NFL is the one thing that can pull together an audience of 20 to 30 million people live, real time, right now, play a game, and you get millions to stop what they're doing and focus. In a world where people are fractured into every possible thing that you could do at any given time, whether you're listening to music, whether you're reading a podcast, whether you're watching this show on Netflix or that show on Peacock or this show on Hulu and you're this series or this movie or whatever, or, or possibly reading a book, maybe Playmakers, which fewer and fewer people are doing as I've, I've learned as I learn more about the publishing industry, but I digress. The reality is there's one thing that can pull a huge audience together. One thing, and it's the NFL. Yeah. So, yes, it's going to make more money. The players are going to make more money. Don't get mad at the players because they're making more money. Don't get mad at them. That's the reality. And right now, the receiver market is hot. You know, Chris, I was trying to reconcile this with Shireen yesterday on PFTPM. Let's talk about this for a second. Yeah. Receivers who are proven, who are established among the best in the game, are making gigantic money. They're getting closer and closer to $30 million a year. 
even though there is a fresh supply every year of great young receivers. It's kind of like the running back position, but the receivers, unlike the running backs, are getting gigantic money, the best of the best. Teams aren't saying, ah, we're not going to pay him. We'll just go draft somebody. It's, it's, a, it's a, a weird difference and distinction between two positions that are becoming very much alike because of the supply every year of new guys who can do what the older, very expensive guys can do. Why are they so expensive yeah, yeah. when there are these younger guys that are coming in that can do the same thing? It's, it's a weird dynamic that's been punctuated this year by Devontae Adams, Tyree Kill, Stephon Diggs. Yep. Now this expectation that DK Metcalf and A.J. Brown are going to get that money. It's hard to reconcile because one of these teams eventually is going to say, screw it. We'll just and then maybe that's what the Packers did. See, for every team that says, yeah, come on, bring him, like the Raiders and the Dolphins with Adams and Hill, you got the Packers and the Chiefs saying, we'll take the draft picks and go get the young guy. Well, you're you're right. I mean, there's definitely that aspect. I, I think there's a few things that come into play here. It's a good conversation. It really is. First off, wide receiver, there's there's more of a shelf life, right? So there's going to be more willingness to throw money at them because one, wait, you know, we think this guy, you know, not only he's got some a bunch of years left in him, but he's going to stay healthy too. The injury rate, getting banged up, losing speed, losing power because of the crushing the crushing hits the running backs always take. It takes a big toll. So I think that's part of the reason too. And then I think also, Mike, the value of the wide receiver is is really propped up by the way the NFL is set up right now. That's the biggest thing. It's it's the the old adage of you know defense wins championships and you know you got to run the ball in the playoffs like the, that crap's done not no more not anymore yeah sure that helps and there's years that'll certainly may be true but again we just watched two teams get in the Super Bowl with high powered passing offenses that you know hey we got a problem here and a problem here but it doesn't matter you can't cover this guy zing zong zoom and we're gonna throw the ball over the field on you. You know, so that's where I think the value has gotten because I think teams have looked at it and go, whoa, you get two game breaking receivers on your team and all of a sudden you have an elite unit and all of a sudden we got a really damn good team and we're hard to beat no matter what the circumstances are with good receivers, good quarterback and the way the rules are set up. I think that would be without thinking about it a whole lot. And I probably have more thoughts on this. That would be my first few thoughts, at least, Mike. Does that make sense to you at all? Well, it does. And the one yeah. thing I thought of is the fact that you have much more wear and tear on the running backs. Their exactly. Car crashes. Right. They they burn out faster than the receivers. Yeah. But from a purely dollars and cents value judgment standpoint, the idea that you can go find plenty of young receivers who can come in and have an impact. You know, how many teams, and this goes back to the old conversation about guys like Terrell Owens and Randy Moss, how many teams win Super Bowls with true number one top of the league receivers how many actually do it not many yeah not no. many win it with the absolute best game breaking receiver in the nfl on the field and yes we saw the chiefs do it a couple of years ago yeah but but rams you know, last year i mean you know yeah, and the yeah. rams with cooper cup yeah, yeah. Chip, no but it's changing point. i think that's to your point it's changing the it's a di it's different now i think that's what it is and it's it's not about we're just gonna pay this one running back it's going to go, wait, we want a receiver that can fly down the field and run deep. And, oh, damn, wait, there's another one that's specialized in running these five- and eight-yard routes and is really quick out of his breaks and he's smart. Well, he's not the superstar the guy that can go deep is that we're going to pay $25 million, But, damn, this is an important thing for our offense, so we're going to pay him 15 or $16 million, right? You know, so that's, I think that's another aspect, too. There's a little bit – there's a few other ways to do it at the position uh, and get money that way as well, which might add to the value of the market and the overall number of receivers altogether too. By the way, Cooper Cup may want to begin leaking the idea that he's considering retirement or going to Amazon to be uh, an on-air talent because uh, he needs some leverage. He's making $14.875 million this year, $14.625 million next year. He's got two years left on his contract. He only did a three-year extension, which was really smart from his perspective because he's he's in about half of the market right now. I think the Rams, yeah. uh, they, they need to – They're they doing to, good they there. Get, <laughs> they need to go back to the couch cushions but, on the Stan Kroenke Super Yacht and start no digging doubt. around for some money. No doubt. But, hey, Rams, Bucks, Chiefs, I mean, there's three Super Bowl champs in a row where – you go, oh, no, no, there was 
substantially something about the offense and the receivers. You know, so that, you know, again, I think it is a little bit of a sign of the times and how things are changing too a little bit there to the value of it. But it's a, it's a good conversation. There's no doubt about that. Here's the other side of it too, though. Yeah. There's a lot more great receivers than there used to be. There is. There definitely is. You know, but I think we're seeing that. You know, there's there is a unlike the quarterbacks, we're seeing a true pecking order at wide receiver to a degree as far as like, oh, wait, these are superstar guys. Oh, these are number two guys. Oh, this guy is just a slot guy, all of that. So there are different tiers uh, in that too. But you're right. I mean, we got a ton of talented guys coming out every year. And, you know, the, to tie this all together a little too with the Jets, Mike, and what we're talking about here, this is the other thing I just wanted to bring up about this. Obviously, the Jets don't love any receiver at number 10. I mean, they, they've pretty much made that clear over the last, like, week or so. You know, at least there's no one there that they're just going, hey, we're good, we're good, we'll just sit here and wait. You know, again, I think the receiving class is a hair overrated this year. I do. I said that to you, I think, last week. Uh, but I do find that interesting, too. They're kind of sitting in the range of you can have any receiver you want. Nobody's being looked at as a top 10 pick. So you're going to have maybe the first guy off the board or whoever it is. And they don't seem to – fancy anybody as of right now they'd rather have that proven commodity that you talk about so much i don't want the first receiver off the board in round one i think yeah. that's the kiss, of <laughs> yeah, death. kiss of death. i want a yeah. guy i want a second rounder who comes into the nfl with a chip on his shoulder to stick up his butt and he's working even harder to prove that he should have been a first rounder the michael thomas effect that's what i want you look at aj brown debo samuel dk metcalf they were all second round picks in 2019 yeah that extra little boost. I know Jamar Chase turned out fine. As a <laughs> Get him, Pete. Pick. Pete's He's selling the him in his ear. <laughs> Shut up, Pete. Shut up, Pete. Henry Ruggs. Yeah. <laughs> Henry Ruggs wasn't a great receiver before he had completely different issues that washed him out of the league. Yeah, so right. There, there's you, you, you. And you get him cheaper, too, if you get him in second and third round. I mean, there's there's something to be said, just like with running back. Yeah. Because there's so many of them, do not rush to get one unless you do get a great guy like Jamar Chase last year by the Bengals. Pete, I stand or sit corrected. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.